everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video it, it's me it, it's I please do the most and do the best by subscribing to the channel and also uh, clicking that notification bell so that you know every single time I upload not only that can you also follow me on Instagram that would be great I will be putting my Instagram handle right throughout the video so that you can see what it is and if you have your phone on you just click and give me a follow thank you so much for being here and I felt like this would be a great time for me to do a little bit of a mental health update I remember the last time I did a mental health update was right in the throngs of COVID it was right right in the throngs of COVID I don't know if you remember that one I'll link it down below but a lot has happened since then that was 2020 and of course in my vlogs I may have had days where I've had bad mental health days where I've had good mental health days and all of that and I may have spoken about that within my vlogs but I th thought that it would also be great for me to sit down and actually discuss where I'm at right now in terms of my mental health uh, what's going on um, and yeah so we can have like a really uh, intimate chat about what's been happening and I feel like right now is a really great time to be having this chat I feel you know let's just let me get comfortable because wow and um so i feel like right now would be a great time to be having this chat because just yesterday was the uh burial of ricky rick and if you don't know who ricky rick is if you're following us from different parts of the world following me from different parts of the world ricky rick was a major 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 celebrity hip-hop also, maybe even Guaido artist a little bit, um, who passed away. And um, a lot of talk from his passing that has come from his passing is about mental health and struggling with depression and struggling with anxiety. And I thought, I feel like now would be a really great time to actually talk about where I'm at. Um, and just to go back to Ricky Rick, really, may his soul rest in peace. And I'm praying for his family because it's really, really just even hearing it i'm typically somebody who doesn't get um phased for lack of a better word phased by celebrity passings and all of that because i'm just like i, I didn't know them i feel bad but i didn't know them and what have you and i feel bad for that day or so and whatever but with Ricky Rick, it hit me a lot because there was the whole chat about mental health and struggling, um, you know, with, with what's going on in your thoughts, in your life, in your mind and all of that. And as somebody who struggles with uh, anxiety disorder, I know that we can often live in our minds and we just can't get out of uh the thoughts that we have like it, it's constantly bothering us um but there's anxiety and there's depression and these are two very very different things very different things i was listening to 702 i think this morning where they were talking about how it would be so great to start seeing the the government implementing campaigns that centralize the focus on mental health and mental health awareness because in South Africa, listen, you're going to see posters and campaigns about HIV AIDS and all of that. And that is great. That's amazing. That's good. But I feel like it's time we start addressing a really huge elephant in the room, like worldwide, but more so centrally focusing it to South Africa, where we talk about mental health a lot more than we already have. And I feel like um, in his passing, I don't think Ricky Rick would have ever known how huge this would be not only just his passing and him leaving the earth but how huge it would be in terms of creating a conversation around mental health and and depression and anxiety and all of that so um generally for me around over the last couple of months or really just the beginning of this year I feel like I have been doing well, even though I have the bad days, which are the really bad days where you just don't, you just don't want to, my bad days were typically just triggered by something. So I've been fortunate enough that I didn't just wake up 
thank goodness, touch wood. I didn't just wake up feeling some type of way uh, recently, which happened to me quite a lot in 2019, 2020, and 2021 a little bit. Um, I've been fortunate enough that I don't wake up feeling like I don't want to do it and I don't, I've been fortunate enough. My anxiety a lot of the time recently or in the last year, at the beginning of this year and maybe a little bit to the latter part of 2021 was triggered by something. So it's not really something that just, you know, uh, happened waking up in the morning or what have you it was actually triggered by something and what i noticed is often it was triggered by social media it was triggered by what i was seeing on social media hence what inspired this video along with ricky rick but also what inspired this video is how to manage your mental health as a social media content creator even just as a person, but I feel like it's more directed to social media content creators, how to manage your mental health. And I have taken steps in the last couple of months, later on in the year of 2021, and now in this year, in the first three months of the year, I have taken some steps to manage my mental health and not be triggered by certain things especially when it comes to social media and being a content creator and i'm going to tell you what those are but in terms of the update i feel like relatively i've been doing well there was a bit of a trigger in ricky rick's passing that really that whole day when we found out last week that day and two days after that was just uh, just, I just don't even, I was so sad. And I, I think I remember that day Tandy came to the house and I remember we were talking about it or whatever. I was so sad on that day, man, I couldn't, I couldn't even, I couldn't get away from it. Um, and that really put me in a really major slump over those two, um, days or so. But on the upside, I've been rather hopeful for 2022. I've been rather hopeful, especially for my mental health in 2022. It's been going relatively well so far, even though I don't know, like anything could happen. I could switch off the camera right now and totally tank. Like it, it can happen. Uh, this is something we don't have control over a lot of the time, uh, but we can control how we manage it, right? We can control how we need it, how we need to be okay for ourselves in terms of how we manage it. I really, really, for me, I've been really fortunate, really, really fortunate in the first three months of the year where for the most part, I've been relatively happy. I've had the moments where I've been stressed but I've been relatively coasting quite well. I've been in a good place with my family. I've been in a good place with friends, my life. I've been actually quite hopeful about 2022. And because of that, I've found myself really just diving into work, diving into my podcast. If you don't know, I have a podcast. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's called uh, Candid with Cat, The Introvert Diaries. I've been diving into work. I've been diving into my podcast, my social media. I've really been pushing. Um, and it's one of the things that made me realize that I am a high-functioning anxiety individual. I really like to keep busy. Like, even when it hits, I just want to do something, right? Unless it's like really, 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 really bad. And where you just draw the shades and you just really want to curl up in a ball. That's a different story altogether. Um, but for the most part, I have been good. And I'm hoping that it stays like this for a while. Okay. I'm really hoping that it stays like this for a while. But I've noticed that my social, my anxiety would always be triggered slightly by social media. And because of that, I have taken steps as a social media content creator to mitigate all of that. And I'm going to tell you what those are now. As a social media content creator, I have taken major steps to try and balance, manage, and mitigate my mental well-being. And one of them, the first one for me, is trying to only be on social media when I have to be. 
because I'm a content creator, so I have to post stuff and I have to post videos and I have to post call to actions that, you know, I've just dropped a video or whatever. But a lot of the time, I find myself not lingering on social media anymore. I don't sit there and scroll and scroll and scroll and look at this and look at that and blah, blah, blah. Next thing I find myself sitting on social media for hours on end. I used to do that. Um, I don't do it anymore. I literally go into Instagram, I post what I post, and then I take maybe five minutes to literally just scroll, like what I like, what, what I see, and all of that, and then keep it moving. And really that's helped. Um, an app that I try to stay away from quite a bit, like I'll go in and I'll tweet, you can already tell, I'll go in and I'll tweet a little bit or whatever, but I try to stay away very far from, especially on days where something is happening. Like when we found out about Ricky Rick, I tried to stay away from the app. I literally did one or two tweets about Ricky Rick. That was it. I didn't tweet much that day and all of that. So Twitter is an app that I really find poisonous. Honestly, not only as a social content creator, but just as a person, mm. <laughs> just as a person, I find Twitter very, very poisonous and a really um, just vile space. It's a vile space where people are so trigger happy. Instagram is still nice. It's still fun and flowery on Instagram and everybody can have a good time. But Twitter, I just find it to be vile, absolutely vile. So on days where I know, or I've just found out, even on Twitter or on the news or whatever, that something has happened, I try to stay very far away from Twitter. Um, so I manage my mental stability and well-being that way, where I make sure that I cut the time that I spend on social media. And I've done that quite a lot. Um, another thing that I have learned to do, and I only learned this last year, Figile taught me, you can actually block out certain words. So there's certain words that I block out that I just don't want to see, especially if, um, you know, something is happening and this particular word is constantly, like for the past three days, it's been trending. I literally block out the words and then when I feel like I'm okay and whatever, then I can go back and, you know, but I actually actively block out that word. So anything, any tweet or anything that comes up with that word, I don't see it. That's one of the best things that I feel like social media has done, especially when it comes for, to uh, mental health. Block out the words, block out the words that you do not need. So words like rape, words like abuse, words like gender-based violence, words like whatever. If you need to block out those words for your mental health, please do. Whatever they may be, depression, whatever they may be, anything that's going to offset you or trigger you, please block out those words. These um, social media platforms have those features where you can do that. Another big thing that I did is I unfollow accounts that really just don't serve me or that trigger me or that put me in a position where I feel like I'm inadequate or I'm not doing enough. Even content creators where I feel like, hey man, this girl's doing a lot, bro. And she's putting me in a place where I feel a little bit inadequate or I feel like I need to keep pushing and putting pressure on myself. Nah, bro. <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, bro. I literally unfollow or I mute. Sometimes I don't want to unfollow because I feel like I'm giving you my support as a social creator to another social creator or to another person or to another company. I'm giving you my support by following you, but then I can mute you so that I don't see anything, uh, which is something that I do quite a lot now. And I literally go through all of these things, accounts that I follow and whatever. And I'm like, do I need this? Is this necessary? So for me, a lot of the time I follow um, a lot of South African content creators that, that I really like. And I also follow um, certain ones from overseas that I really like as well from outside our borders. But I also follow a lot of homeware stuff. And I also follow a lot of bookstagram accounts or booktube, bookstagram accounts uh, or uh, booktubers or book creators uh, because I love that because it's a good space to be in and I love to read. But aside from that, nah. I ain't trying to follow anything that's going to stir up or destabilize my mental stability at that point. Uh, another thing that I do is I'm very particular about when I record, I schedule everything. 
um, I don't do this thing where I haphazardly just decide, oh, today I'm going to record. I don't do that anymore. I literally set out today and I go and I plan things and I write things down because a lot of the time with my content, there's certain things like today, there's certain things that I would have to write down because it's a serious topic or it's a motivating topic or a motivating empowered topic or whatever. I have to write certain things down. I can't suck things out of my thumb. I'm not that kind of content creator and I'm not the kind of content creator where I'm just, you know, winging it, makeup, whatever, whatever. There's certain things that I talk about on this channel that are very serious and I don't, I can't suck it out of my thumb. It's things that I need to research a little bit, watch videos on, read articles or journals on and whatever. And that takes time. So yeah. So a lot of the time I schedule and prep everything. Uh, Google Calendar is one of my favorites. And there is uh, also an app. Oh my God, what's this app that I love so much? Where is it? Organize, yeah, that's it. Uh, Google Calendar is my favorite and plan as well. It's a really good app that I use a lot of the time, especially when I'm planning social media stuff. I think the biggest thing and probably the last one, I think would be to maintain some sort of balance, right? I maintain a lot of balance in my life in the sense that there's time for social media there's time for my life, my friends, my family, my partner. There's time for that. And I cut it out. When I'm with my friends, yeah, sure, when I'm with Palesa, Prue, Bali, whatever. When I'm with them, sure, I'll do a couple of snaps. But really, in truth, I literally just do one or two. I never, unless if we're going away and I tell them that I'm going to be vlogging and whatever, and they're cool with it, that's fine. When I'm with my partner, I am barely on social media. I don't even look at it. I will just maybe pop in when, especially if he's not in the room, I'll maybe pop in for like two minutes and have a look or whatever. But a lot of the time, 90% of the time, I'm not on it. When I'm with my family, my phone is sitting right here. When I'm with my family, I'm not bothered. I, I just, I'll pick it up if my lady says, hey man, film Bella is trending on, on Twitter or whoever's trending, trending or whatever, you know, I'll only pick it up. But a lot of the time I've tried to make it a habit to put my phone away from me. A lot of the time before I would always have my phone in my lap or I'd always have my phone in my hand or whatever. But in truth, what's happened now, I keep my phone away from me. So if I'm watching TV, my phone might be on the couch, but it's on the other end of the couch. It's not next to me. Or if I am... Uh, going into the shower a lot of the time I had this habit of playing a YouTube video on my phone And then I would balance it and while I'm in the shower. I'm watching this video. It's ridiculous Like I really it got to such a bad point that I was just like Why are you carrying your phone everywhere with you when I go to the toilet now? I try not to carry my phone with me. Why I'm going to do something. I'm going to connect with myself <laughs> So why am I taking my phone with me? Um, so yeah, those are the things that I've tried to do and they've really helped quite a bit. And I just wanted us to have this little chat, uh, on my mental health update and also to ask you how you have been doing. I know, um, I am, you, you know how I'm doing half the time because I, there's content up every week and there's a vlog up every week. So you can gauge a little bit where I'm at, but a little bit, tiny bit, like you literally see like 30 minutes in a vlog spend over four days you know what i mean but um this is also me reaching out to you because i know that as content creators a lot of the time we don't reach out to y'all you know y'all are reaching out to us and uh sending us messages i hope you're okay i hope you get through this i hope you whatever but truly i'm also reaching out to you in this video and i'm asking you how are you doing and if you're okay that's great i wish all the best for you and if you're not and you want to talk about it please hit me up um, so yeah, how are you doing? How's your mental health? Where are you in your mental journey right now? Um, and always remember, just take care of your heart, take care of your mind, take care of your body, right? Because your body, when your body is in a good place, your body can help your mind feel better. Uh, it can help your heart feel better. Everything is kind of li linked, inter interlinked. Um, just take care of your spirit, you know, because above all else, that's all that matters. Um, that's pretty much it for me. I hope 
this video wasn't just the whole crackle. <laughs> um, I don't think it was. But I wanted to check in on you guys. Let me know how you're doing. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please do like it. Uh, subscribe. Let's try and get the video to over a thousand likes. Let's get mental health videos liked and appreciated and watched as much as all these other videos are. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for me. I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys keep well. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, hot, hot, <laughs> hot mind. Take care of it. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye.